my name is Amrita and I am using the InSpirit VR platform to teach you about cellular biology today. So let's get started. Um, so you can see the entire eukaryotic cell in front of me. You can see all the organelles kind of moving around. I can stick my head inside just to kind of see all these organelles moving around me. Pretty cool. Um, but today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the different organelles and I will just be giving you an overview of each organelle, their different parts, and in future videos we'll dive into specific organelles and learn about their different functions. So first I'm jumping to the mitochondria. So you can see the mitochondria right here in front of me. Um, you can see how much bigger it is compared to everything else in the cell. So these are really small ribosomes. If I kind of walk around, I can see this is a lysosome that's very, very small compared to the giant mitochondria. Um, let's take this mitochondria apart. So as you can see, this is labeled the outer membrane. Um, I can pull it out. Uh, we can see these small holes in the outer membrane. These are called porins. Um, and we can see that the outer membrane is actually a semi-permeable phospholipid bilayer. And we'll go into what this means in future videos. So this is the inner membrane. Um, it's folded into many cristae, as you can see over here, that actually increases the surface area of the inner membrane. And inside the inner membrane, you actually have this matrix, which is represented here. So you can see this type of jelly-like fluid and this is the other half of the inner membrane. We basically dissected the mitochondria. That's what we've just done. So you can see the inner membrane here. You can see the outer membrane that we just placed over there. Now inside the actual mitochondria, um, there are all these different parts. So the ribosomes that we saw floating in the cell earlier, they're also actually in the mitochondria. So these are the ribosomes. And they are the site of biological protein synthesis, whether they're inside the mitochondria or outside. You have ATP, which I'm sure you've heard about before. It creates energy. You have different proteins in the mitochondria. And you even have DNA in the mitochondria. And this is special mitochondrial DNA. And we'll talk more about this in future videos. Okay, so for now, since I've basically disassembled the entire mitochondria. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it before we leave. And let's go back. Cool. So the next organelle that we're going to be looking at is the nucleus. Um, okay, so here you can see the entire nucleus. It's much, much bigger than any other organelle in the cell. Earlier, we thought the mitochondria was huge. Obviously, the nucleus is way bigger. Um, so we can go around. It's actually surrounded by this envelope, and we'll talk about this in a minute, um, but this is the nucleus. So I'm just going to pull out the outer membrane of the nucleus. Um, you can see that it's actually a bilipid layer. See over here, there's two different layers inside, and this is actually a nuclear pore right here. Um, I can actually step inside the nucleus, and I'm now surrounded by chromatin which is where you find the DNA in the nucleus. And in the center, you find the actual nucleolus. And this is the site where ribosomes are produced and assembled. Right now, we've kind of represented the nucleolus as this dense ball, but in reality, it's just this chromatin really densely bound at the center of the nucleus. Let's jump to the next one. I'm gonna go back. So I'm going to skip this for now and I'm going to jump to this because this is what we saw surrounding the nucleus earlier. So this is the endoplasmic reticulum and you can see that it's this network of membranes. So you have two parts. You have the rough endoplasmic reticulum which has these ribosomes on it and let me pull out the ribosomes. Um, and then you have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum which doesn't have any ribosomes on it. So if I go ahead and grab the ER, you can see that it's actually a rough network of membranes. And there's kind of like these holes in between, there's these different passages. Um, and over here, if I go in really deep, you can see that there's actually a hole. So this connects to the outer envelope of the nucleus. That's kind of what that hole is for. 
Um, there's also the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So this looks more like tubes. And it also is connected to the ER and you can kind of see these holes that connect to the rough ER. So it's this entire network of membranes. And the rough ER actually synthesizes proteins while the smooth ER synthesizes lipids and enzymes. And so we'll talk a little bit more about these in future videos once again. I'm gonna jump back. So one of the other organelles that we saw right next to the ER was actually the Golgi apparatus, which you can see right here, it's glowing. Um, so you can see that it's right next to the ER and it looks very, very similar. This entire network of membrane is actually made out of the same exact material as the endoplasmic reticulum. It's just that in your textbooks and obviously in the simulation, you see a different color just so that you're able to recognize that it's a different organelle compared to the ER. So I'm gonna step around, go through some of these labels. Um, you can actually see different vacuoles being formed out of the Golgi apparatus. So the Golgi apparatus does a lot of packaging, sorting, and it basically sends out these vesicles. Some of these are vacuoles, vacuoles are specialized vesicles, but vesicles are basically just things that are membrane bound and they contain different things. So they can contain enzymes, they can contain proteins, and they basically um, are shipped either to other parts of the cell or it's shipped outside the cell. No one really knows what's going on inside the Golgi apparatus today. It's a mystery. Um, so you can see this membrane is system. We just know that things are packaged, they're processed, and then they're transported. But there's a lot of research going on on what exactly happens inside the Golgi apparatus. So if you're interested in cellular biology, this is definitely a field of study right now. I'm going to jump back. Perfect. So let's jump to one of those vesicles that we talked about. So this is a lysosome. It's actually a specialized vacuole. Um, and you can see over here that there's an outer membrane, which is also semi-permeable bilayer. Almost all the organelles here are bilayers. Um, you can see these enzymes. And this actually helps the lysosome digest different molecules. The lysosome is known as the recycling center of the cell or the waste management center. And these enzymes on the surface kind of help the lysosome digest worn down or broken organelles or even viruses, um, any invaders in the cell. The lysosome also has different proteins and these have specialized functions as well that we'll be talking about in future videos gonna jump back so now you can kind of see this is a lysosome that's floating around and you can distinguish the lysosome from just a regular vacuole which we're gonna go and see in a minute um, just by the presence of different proteins and enzymes on it where you can see that, that there's nothing on the vacuole okay. let's jump in so the final organelle that we're gonna be looking at today is the vacuole so a vacuole is just a storage sack. It can honestly have anything. Um, this is just a generic term. It can have water, nutrients, or enzymes. And there's also many specialized vacuoles in the cell, like we saw the lysosome earlier. And there's typically many vacuoles in a cell. And this is a eukaryotic plant cell. So if you happen to look at a eukaryotic plant cell versus an animal cell, the plant cell is going to have one huge vacuole in the center. And that's how you can distinguish between the two jump back. Awesome. So you can see all the organelles floating around here. So this outer membrane is a cell membrane. It is also semi-permeable, meaning that it allows some objects in and allows some objects out. It's semi-permeable, so it chooses what it lets in and lets out. You can see everything floating inside. That's because the cell um, contains cytoplasm. And so cytoplasm is this jelly-like fluid, and it allows the different organelles in the cell to float within it. So that's all that we have for today. Um, I hope that you had fun on this tour. Um, as you can see, I didn't take the time earlier to show you our environment, but as you can see, we're actually below a microscope. And if I take a few steps back, you can see the entire microscope. So we actually dove in to see the cell at a cellular level versus 
having to look through a microscope and try to distinguish these different blurry objects. Um, so this was done using the InSpirit VR platform and I will be doing more teaching videos and putting them up on our channel in future videos. And so you'll be seeing chemistry, you'll be seeing physics and other biology virtual labs as well. So please subscribe and share and we hope to see you again soon.